And so, dear friends, we arrived at the last episode in this advanced color correction series where we'll deal with a few issues that might occur in our footage, such as digital noise, banding, stabilization, flickering and object removal. I want to mention from the beginning that some of these tools used in this episode will require the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. We learn a few valuable tricks that might save some of the footage you are ready to throw away. Let's get rolling. Let's start our problem clips examples with an issue called banding. Banding is an abrupt transition from one color shade to the next, mostly visible in a clear blue sky like here, resulting in these gradient stripes going from darker hues to lighter ones. This usually occurs in 8-bit depth footage from certain cameras or mobile devices due to compression and the limited amount of colors available to render a smooth transition. So how do we go about fixing it? It's pretty easy. So let's just create a new serial node by clicking Alt or Option S and call it D-Band. Then from this open effects at the top, let's choose the D-band OFX and drop it on our node. You can see that the banding completely was removed from the sky. The problem is that this comes at the expense of detail loss. You can see we lost the details in the waves below if I turn this D-band on or off. So for that, we'll need to use a qualification so that the D-band is only applied to the sky. We can do that either by using the qualifier or in this case, we're gonna use a power window that we'll place over the sky. Let's feather it a little bit on the bottom and let's see how this looks when we play it back. So in this situation, we don't have to track it because the horizon is pretty stable. So at this point, we have the D-band only applied to the sky and not the waves. And this way, we preserve the details in this portion of the image. The next issue we've been all battling at one point was having digital noise in lower light settings due to higher ISO values. The studio version of DaVinci Resolve has an amazing noise reduction feature that arguably surpasses many of the paid plugins available. But just like with the D-band feature, noise reduction comes at the expense of losing detail in our image, so we'll have to use it carefully. Digital noise reduction is usually followed by adding film grain, which in exchange brings a certain amount of detail back in the image. Image, with the added bonus of an organic field due to the actual grain simulation of certain film stocks. The difference between digital noise and film grain is that digital noise has chroma and luminance patterns that will alter the image with splotches of color, while film grain affects only the luminance and emulates the grain in film stocks, resulting in a pleasant feel. So let's take for example this image. You can see how much noise we have in the midtones, especially on her face, which is obviously due to the high ISO and low light situation we have here. I already created an exposure and contrast node here and we'll be adding the noise reduction node right in front of it. We can use the Shift S shortcut to add a serial node in front of our existing node and let's label it noise reduction. To add noise reduction to our image, we'll head over to the motion effects tab over here and let's start with these values for the frames we'll choose three and for the motion estimated type we'll choose better and we'll start fiddling with the temporal threshold values keeping an eye on her face and see how that noise is disappearing say about there we're trying to find a sweet spot between noise removal and preserving detail next let's head over to the spatial threshold and unlink the luma and chroma and move the chroma value up say about there until our noise becomes acceptable we don't have to go too much because that will make any skin tone look plasticky and unnatural the luma value affects the luminance noise while the chroma affects the chroma noise leaving the luma value at zero and only increasing the chroma will minimize detail loss let's see how our noise reduction worked so this is without noise reduction and and this is with. And you can see how clean the image is after we apply the noise reduction, but also how we lost some of the detail. So keep that in mind. Let's go back to full zoom and play back. This looks pretty good. Next, let's go ahead and add film grain. We'll add that at the end of our node tree. So it's the last node in the pipeline. And from the open effects up here, let's find our film grain, this one here, and just drop it on the node. 
And from here, let's zoom in and see the effect of film grain over our image. Let's choose the 35 millimeter 400T film stock from the film grain presets and fiddle with the grain strength and grain size until we find an amount that is acceptable. So for instance here. And again, if we turn film gray off and on, it's a very subtle effect, but it brings some of that detail that we lost with the noise reduction. It's amazing how much the noise reduction and the film grain can bring back from an image like this. So let's talk next about chromatic aberration, also known as fringing. If you shoot video with certain older or cheaper lenses, you might notice the coloring that you get in the high contrasty areas, like for instance, this pole. If I zoom even more in, this is even more obvious, where you can see the cyan fringing on one side and the magenta fringing on the other. To go on fixing this issue, it's as simple as adding a new serial node. Obviously, don't forget to label it. And again, we'll head over to the Open Effects tab from where we can drag the Chromatic Aberration Removal OFX plugin over our node, which gives us some values to work with. So for instance, if we pull down the red or cyan edge, you'll notice how on this side of the pole, on the left side of the pole, that fringing is going to disappear. Bring it down to a place where that coloration basically disappears. The same thing can happen on the blue edge. Make sure that you add just enough so you don't go into the other extreme where you can actually induce aberration. So keep that somewhere in the sweet spot. And again, let's turn off this OFX. This is without and this is with. And you can see like we induce some of the actual magenta aberration on this side. So let's just dial it back just a little, just enough so it looks natural. Fiddle with this value a little bit. So this is it for the chromatic aberration removal. Next one is dealing with lens distortion. For this one, we'll fix things in the edit tab as opposed to the color tab as before. First, make sure that your inspector is open from this link in the upper right corner. Then head over to the lens correction. If you don't have the lens correction open, just double click on it. And from here, you can go ahead and click on analyze, which usually does a pretty good job, but I found it sometimes it's too extreme. Did a pretty good job, not bad. This is a GoPro footage, which has a very obvious fisheye lens effect on it. And let's check if we can do a better job at fixing this manually. So let's just reset this and just move the distortion slider until you get the desired effect. Obviously, you will lose pixels and resolution because of this effect, but with certain lenses, you only need a small amount of adjustment to fix the perspective. Following next, let's take a look at stabilizing shaky footage, for instance, from a handheld camera. DaVinci Resolve Studio has an amazing image stabilizer that works extremely well in most of the footage, but there are some things to consider. So let's take a look at the image stabilizer. Again, open the inspector to access it and down at the stabilization, double click it. And by default, you already have some values in the image stabilization, the mode, the zoom, and the cropping ratio, the smooth and the straight. I found that the similarity mode will give you a much more pleasant result without any artifacting in the background like warping or some strange artifact happening in the background. The perspective mode is great where you have defined perspective lines in your frame such as buildings on a street. The similarity mode is using only pan, tilt, zoom and rotation analysis. This one is a great option if the perspective mode introducing warping artifacts. And lastly, the translation mode is using only the pan and tilt movement analysis. This is a great option where the motion is limited to only the X and Y axis. If you want your footage to be completely stabilized as if it's on a tripod, you would check the camera lock. For camera lock, it really depends on the type of movement and footage you have to deal with. Works usually with footage that doesn't have a big amount of movement. For instance, this one here, there's just a slight amount of movement. Go ahead and click the camera lock and hit stabilize and let's see the result. So we did a pretty good job, but you really have to pay attention to artifacts in your frame. The zoom checks how much of the edges after stabilization will be removed. Cropping ratio will show you how much of that punch in zoom will happen after the stabilization. Smooth will give us a smoother movement 
and strength, the same thing, how much of the stabilization you want to happen in this image. I usually leave all these by default and play with these values and see sometimes in certain situations you will get better results. So let's try stabilizing this footage and see the result. So you saw how our image got zoomed in because of the cropped areas. If not, you will see how we have those black edges around the image where we lose pixels due to the stabilization. So we need to, we need to have this zoom clicked so that we have those black edges removed. So you can see it did a pretty good job at stabilizing the image. There's a little artifact happening here where you can you can see a warping effect in this area. So keep an eye on these. If this didn't work, you can just reset the stabilization and try a different mode. For instance, translation and see if that produces a better result. Okay, let's see if this worked. It seems like the same. Try with perspective. Yeah, for this, for this particular situation, seems like perspective works even better. So yeah, this is a quick and effective way to stabilize shaky footage. So how should we deal with footage that has flickering from an artificial light source like a fluorescent light or similar, just like we have here? So you can see that flickering is very obvious, especially in the highlights. So how to fix this? Create a serial node in front of this exposure and contrast that I already have here using the Shift S shortcut. Let's label it. And from the Open Effects tab at the top, let's choose the Deflicker OFX and just drop it on the Deflicker node we created. All of a sudden, you'll see that things gets fixed, but there's a certain ghosting in her face as she lifts her face up, if you can see that. And that's because we need to change the, the flicker setting parameter from time lapse to fluoro light, which basically this is. It's a fluorescent light lighting. So let's see how that fixed our footage. So as you can see, it does the job really well, removes the flicker, but it also slows down the playback because this OFX, it's very processor intensive. The slowdown is only affecting the playback, not the exported footage. And lastly, let's tackle object removal in your images like logos or all sorts of trademarks or all sorts of things that you don't want to appear in your image. Now I want you to realize that this is a very basic trick to remove objects in your image that are accessible, that are not impeded by anything that passes in front of them. That sort of thing requires a little bit more in-depth tutorial and attention to it. In this case, we're going to remove the house number, which can present a privacy issue in stock footage. So first step, let's just create a serial node and let's call it number. Next, let's head over to the power window tab and choose the curve, zoom in to the number and let's just draw polygon around it. Let's include the shadow as well. Okay, let's give it an inside softness and an outside softness, not too much. Next, let's head over to the tracker and track it from wherever you are backwards and go back to where we started, track it forward. And as you see, the tracker did a pretty good job at following the handheld movement. Next, let's move our power window to a place where we will sample the new texture from. For instance, from this spot of the wall. We want this patch to cover our number and hopefully our shadow. So let's see if we can do that. After we move the swatch over the piece of the texture, in our case, the wall that we want to sample from, we'll head over to the sizing tab and from this menu, select node sizing. And this is how we are going to manipulate that power window swatch to cover the number using the pan, tilt, zoom, and rotate. So let's start with the tilt, just align it over that number and let's use the pan out there and let's see how this works out if we play it back as you can see this is a pretty good job uh, there is one part in the image where the swatch covers the, the post box right there so in that case we just want to make sure that we move the tilt up and maybe pan over this way and just adjust it so that you have a nice smooth playback with the swatch let's see how this looks from full zoom. 
Yeah. That did a pretty good job. That was quite a bit of information to digest, I know. As I mentioned before, the best way to understand the concepts we've covered in these episodes is to practice on your own footage. Only then will you discover the potential that lies within these tools and lessons. Thank you so much for watching and please make sure to like, subscribe and leave a comment below. We like to chat. Cheers!